Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain-Free and Fit and Posturecise. Today we've got a great video for you, part three of our straight-legged glute bridge exercise for spondylolisthesis. We're going to be going over some advanced concepts and how to make this exercise more advanced, more challenging, to benefit your stability of your spondylolisthesis and help get you out of pain. Hope you enjoy. So there are three concepts that we can use once we've been doing the straight-legged glute bridge for our spondylolisthesis at L5-S1 to increase its effectiveness, to add challenges to our exercise, to make our core stronger, and to make the stability or the pain-free holding ability of your lower back even greater. The first concept is in the top portion of the straight-legged glute bridge, we're going to isometrically hold that position for longer periods. Now remember, the key with doing a glute bridge, just to review in case you haven't seen part one or part two, is to number one, understand your unique body mechanics and posture, and align yourself and create the proper tensions in your core muscles that are needed for you. We all have asymmetrical postures, we all have movement tendencies that we favor to one side, and as a result, every single person with spondylolisthesis that I've seen in 28 years of clinical practice has some type of posture issue, has some type of mechanical issue where they're not engaging their core muscles correctly. So if you haven't yet done so, go to the Pain-Free and Fit or Posture Size website, take our free body analysis, and learn what your unique posture and mechanical issues are. So you can then hold those issues or those corrections as you do this or any other corrective exercise. We said that when we do a glute bridge, we emphasize pulling our lower abdomen in to engage our transverse abdominis, creating some tension in our lower back on the sides of our vertebrae, the multifidi muscles, so they engage. And we use a tailbone under or pubic bone up tension to recruit the abdominals and to hold the spine so it doesn't overarch. That allows our erector spinae or back muscles to exert at lower levels of the longissimus and iliocostalis a backwards pressure on our vertebra as we raise. So we've learned that in videos number one and two. In video three, what we're doing to increase that, once we've built those reps up to say 30 to 50 repetitions, at the top now, we can start holding the top positions for longer periods, perhaps five to 10 seconds. This trains the endurance function of all these core muscles, which is key for any spinal stability. You need two different types of training for spinal stability. One is pure strength when you're lifting things that are heavy or twisting or pulling things that have great resistance. And two, you need endurance for postures that you're going to assume that you need to hold your body in a stable position for longer periods of time. So simply holding longer periods at the top is one way that we can increase that endurance training effect. The other way we can do is we can start training for a strength, which is we can use a dumbbell or a plate and we can rest it on top of our hips. Now as the weight gets heavier, you may want to put a towel or a pad down so your hips are comfortable. We're going to do the same exercise and raise against the weight on our hips. Now because the weight is on our hips, it's exerting a pressure backwards. Our glute muscles or our buttock muscles have to contract stronger. That means our core muscles have to contract stronger and our abdominal muscles in particular have to contract stronger. So we've already learned that in the glute bridge, using the straight legs, we want to increase abdominal tension incrementally as we get higher. With greater weight, we want to do that even more so. Again, you can start off with a normal cadence of about a second or second and a half moving up and a second, second and a half moving down. And as time goes on, you can use that first principle of increasing the isometric endurance time at the top. The third principle we can use to increase the challenge of this exercise or the advanced training effect of it is to perform it on one leg. If we bend one knee and keep that foot slightly up off the floor using the other side that's still laying on the bench, we can now use a one-legged glute bridge. Now, the beauty of a one-legged glute bridge is it involves a rotational stability challenge where the body as it's on one leg has a much more of a tendency to twist. Our hips, our torso is pretty locked against the floor, but our hips are going to want to turn as well as our leg. So if you have a postural issue where let's say you have an externally rotated leg where one leg likes to turn out more when you walk or stand, the piriformis is tight on that side, the glute will be weaker on that side, you'll be more likely to hip hike or bring a hip up into the ribs and torso lean to that side. This is a great way to check those weaknesses and train yourself against them to add stability to your lower back. 
So as I come up, I'm using the same idea of tail under tension, increasing it as I go, but I'm also thinking, I want to keep that hip long. I want to keep the foot long through the foot, avoiding the hip height or the shortening. I want to make sure I'm not leaning or tensing more to that standing or weight-bearing side with my rib cage. I want to keep the rib and the hip separated with tension, engaging my opposite or my free leg tension of my abdominals and back muscles on the opposite side to maintain a level pelvis and rib cage where I have equal tension right to left. And of course, I really want to focus on engaging that glute. And again, if you've taken any of our videos in our channel here, you know that the key to glute contraction is tail under tension, to engage the abdominals, to reciprocally inhibit the lower back muscles. And if we notice any hamstring tension, we want to lock that knee out by engaging more quadricep tension, which will reciprocally inhibit the hamstrings, so we can really isolate the glute moving up and down. Use one or all of these concepts in your glute bridge training to help with your spondylolisthesis pain. If you like what we're teaching here and would like to learn more, please subscribe to our channel. You can visit the website painfreeandfit.com. We've got a great new fast track healing exercise program specifically designed for spondylolisthesis that has all the stretches, all the core stability exercises, all the conditioning exercises that really puts the whole program together and customizes it for your unique body. If you'd like to help me share this vital information with others, give me a thumbs up below. I hope this series and these exercises can be used by you to help with your spondylolisthesis pain.